Yeah, well, you know, it's hard to believe that was 2003. The blackout began after a high voltage power line in northern Ohio brushed against overgrown trees and shut down. That led to a cascade of failures. And the blackout really did contribute to at least 11 deaths, cost an estimated $6 billion. Now, there have been a lot of changes since that incident in 2003 to keep the country powered up. Will Jones joins us now live with a look at how secure our power grid is today. Will? Karen and Damon, those connected to our region's power grid say something so massive like the 2003 blackout isn't likely to happen again due to improvements made over the years. But they admit challenges remain on reducing those more localized outages. On my five mile walk, there was nobody that had any power. Allen Park resident Thomas Perry says the outage from the 2003 blackout lasted for days. Everybody cheered when the power went on. There are a number of plants that are damaged. The power went out for 50 million people across eight states and parts of Canada on August 14, 2003. 20 years later, it remains the worst blackout in North American history. It's been a very long and exhausting past 27 hours or so in Metro Detroit. Tim Sparks oversaw electric transmission and system protection at Consumers Energy at the time. A large portion of the electric transmission systems to the south and east of us in particular uh, had completely uh, disconnected from the electric grid. Fortunately, only a small portion of Consumers Energy's customers were affected, but the 2003 blackout revealed vulnerabilities in the region's power grid. Overgrown trees touching a power line in northern Ohio triggered a chain reaction of outages. Instead of that being just a localized incident where you eventually sort of close down that circuit and keep the rest of the, the grid um, up and running, that, that quickly spread in part because of some software bugs, in part because of some uh, localized um, just, just errors. Serving as a wake up call for utility companies. There's many more standards that are in place today than what there used to be to prevent things like the blackout from happening. MISO, short for the Mid-Continent Independent System Operator, is like the air traffic controller of the power system. It focuses on managing the flow of high voltage electricity across 15 states. A spokesperson saying, in the MISO region, we have seen significant investments in transmission infrastructure, as well as much more sophisticated IT and market tools installed on our operation systems. Another difference over the past two decades is the focus on interregional cooperation and working closely with our neighbors. Across the country, utility companies continue to step up their efforts to respond to emerging cybersecurity threats from criminal hackers and nation states. DTE saying in a statement, we take the security of our energy infrastructure extremely seriously. We are constantly monitoring for risk to our system and regularly practice drills so we may quickly respond to any possible scenario and continue delivering the energy our customers need to live, work, and learn each day. But for many Michigan utility customers, they say more needs to be done to prevent weather-related outages. Keith Cooley, who lives in Detroit, hits the Citizens Utility Board of Michigan. I'm concerned it could be it could get worse if we don't, as a state, look at what other states have been doing around um, providing pay for performance, where the utilities figure out how to perform better and give more reliable service to the customers. They're allowed to have their rate increases. Job number one is is to continue to focus on reliability. It's important to mention that we asked DTE for an on-camera interview, but they only released a statement. Michigan Public, Public Service Commission Chair Dan Scripps says utility providers need to do a better job on vegetation management, such as tree trimming, and that could help reduce some of those storm-related outages that we see in our area. Karen? Definitely a lot of lessons to be learned there. We do appreciate it, Will. By the way, our coverage of the 2003 blackout continues on Click on Detroit. There you can find some of the behind the scenes footage of what it was like during those days 20 years ago, including what was going on in our newsroom. We've also got firsthand accounts from the reporters who covered it and the Michigan Public Service Commission report that did follow. So you can find all of that on the top stories on the uh, section on our homepage.